Hello students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to the second session of our weekly magazine where from March 5th to 11th March the important news articles will be discussed in detail and here we are going to segregate it according to our syllabus. We are also trying to take topics from essay and even ethics on the basis of the news that was there in that particular week. First of all, before I begin, I would like to thank all of you for the enormous support that you have shown. And as we had promised, we will be releasing September to Feb current affairs. How exactly we will be sending it, we will be telling you every week one one video about that particular month will be released so that it will be convenient for the students and our target is by April end almost all the current affairs till April will be available for you and the second important thing we are extremely sorry for the answers evaluation which you have actually sent us few students might have already received the answers but few students might have not yet received one of the major reasons for that is we expected very less response where we thought that only few people will be writing but we got almost around 200 answer scripts where we wanted to prove our quality and the feedback had to be good so we are spending time on every answer sheet and we are giving detailed analysis and in the further video or through further communication through the mail itself whenever the answer comes to you we are also giving you if you want to talk to the person who has evaluated the answer even the number will be provided so that initially till we provide the video analysis for your answers you can communicate with that particular person if you are not satisfied with the feedback or if you feel that the feedback is not enough I need to talk more so that where I have to improve much or you have communicated the point but still you have got less marks so there may be multiple reasons so feel free and comfortable to ask we will be communicating it who will be your evaluator for which particular question and uh, the particular source of communication also will be informed few people are comfortable talking on mails and few people are ready to take calls directly so we will be intimating it to you personally based on the answers that you have actually written right so guys let's begin with the likes weekly for march 5th to 11th so the first topic is with respect to the essay here we are actually talking about digital India whether it is a boon or bane so if it is boon is it only for some or if it's a bane is it for many you need to look at every word and try to provide justification for this particular statement so many people have also asked us, so can you please explain what should be the structure of the essay? For this, for any essay, some basic things needs to be done. We will have two videos of two different faculties explaining you about how to write essay. So there is no one particular answer. Once we have those videos, we will be trying to incorporate those in our lectures as well. I wanted to tell this mainly because Whenever you take any essay, the answers that we are seeing, you have the points, but somehow you are not in a position to represent it in the format that is expected of an essay. I would say if you look at the previous year essays, they have clearly mentioned that the main focus of the essay should be on arguing about the topic where you have to talk about the positives, negatives. If you say that I agree with the positives, then you have to counter the negatives. So it should be like one side communication where you're also taking the opposite views and trying to say your opinion about that particular point as well. So for that, 
as I told you, if I do this now, it will take a lot of time. But when we look at the answers, we get a clear understanding that students have the content, but somehow their representation or the style in which they are writing is not proper. So we'll be taking a separate session for that. And then we will be highlighting the structure in later lectures for the essays. And the next issue that is important is with respect to the choral bleaching. As you are aware, recently there was news about the Australia's Great Barrier Reef, which is experiencing mass choral bleaching. And choral, you have to read about the basics which we have provided here. With respect to geography, it's been long time that people have not asked about the coral reefs. So please look into this aspect clearly. And the second important thing, when they are talking about Australia's Great Barrier Reef, one from geography point of view, you should know it is attached to which state of Australia. Right? This is important. And the second important thing which you have to know is what is the difference between fringing reef, barrier reef and atolls. So these three things may be asked in exam. So as of now, if we are focusing on prelims, the question may be with respect to geography and they may ask you with respect to India, where are these present? Recently also, you might have come across the oil spill which has actually happened across Tamil Nadu. When you have oil spill, one of the major impact can be on the coral reefs as well. So, marine pollution, coral reefs and issues with respect to South China Sea which is also associated with exclusive economic zone and other topics. When we have these many topics associated with maritime, Oceanography can be a very important topic to look after this particular year, right? So please focus on this area. I'll show you some of the basics that are actually required for us. So coral reefs are nothing more than diverse underwater ecosystems held together by calcium carbonate, which are secreted by corals and they have symbiotic relationship with zooxanthellae algae. So the coral species which are actually present, they actually have symbiotic relationship with this particular algae. And this is the reason which gives color to the coral reefs. So if this algae dies or if this algae moves out of the coral reefs, then usually the color will be lost. So because of this, we usually say there is something called as coral bleaching. That is, bleaching is a stress response of corals during which they expel their zooxanthellae algae during unfavorable conditions. Which are these unfavorable conditions? Whenever you read in geography about coral reefs, there are certain conditions under which the coral reefs are usually present. That is, the temperature has to be in between 23 to 28 there should not be excess of fresh water. So wherever the mouth of the rivers are usually present, coral reefs do not grow there. And when we take the other important factor, high salinity should not be there. And it will not be present on the back side of the reef, mainly because wherever tides or waves come, they get food for it. These are sessile and they cannot move. There are multiple reasons. Most of the factors when we talk about the coral reefs are usually associated with the zooxanthellae algae. So this is just for basics. We'll be moving quickly to the next page where they have actually given about the coral bleaching picture itself. And here you can usually observe that when you have a healthy coral where both the coral and the zooxanthellae is present, polyp and the zooxanthellae is present. And when the stress increases, usually the zooxanthellae moves out and it appears white in color. This is what we actually call it to be coral bleaching. So don't get confused about the definition of coral bleaching. 
it's very easy for you to understand this particular topic the next when we are looking at the reasons one is temperature as i told you coral system leaves only in temperature of 23 to 29 and this is one of the reasons why they are present only in the tropical region that is in between 23 and half degree north to 23 and half degree south bahamas is the exception but apart from that very few places like you know in temperate regions at very few places you usually observe this and people say wherever these few places about tropic of cancer or capricorn wherever it is present it is actually associated with the warm ocean currents so people give different reasons but please remember that usually it is present in between 23 and half degree north to 23 and half degree south and these are some of the best fishing grounds of the world mainly because these are the rain forests of the world then when we are actually looking at the other reasons what is more important is with respect to sedimentation, fresh water dilution. I told you whenever the sand and muddy water, if it gets accumulated, it blocks the polyps mouth and it dies. The second one is fresh water dilution. Salinity to a certain extent is required for the formation of coral reefs. Eutrophication, overfishing with the use of trawlers, overfishing where sometimes even cyanide is being used during fishing blasts are being made so this causes lot of problem for the coral reefs as well and diseases which are also related to xanthale algae actually leads to this type of coral bleaching there is very important need for protection of this so they actually talk about protecting the Coral reefs is important to maintain the biologically diverse and economically valuable ecosystems on earth. Biologically diverse because they are called as rainforests, economically valuable mainly because best fishing grounds in the world are also seen in these regions apart from the cold and warm ocean currents meeting. Coral ecosystems are a source of food for millions, as I told you. They protect the coastlines from storms and erosion. These points I'm trying to read in detail and we have given it here because we expect a question that what are the benefits of coral ecosystem? So at that point of time, they may ask you, they act as a source of food for millions. They protect coastlines from storms and erosion. Provide habitat, spawning and nursery grounds for economically important fish species. Provide jobs and income to local economies from fishing, recreation and tourism. So you know that wherever you have coral reefs, they actually act as best tourism spots as well. My request to you, please read these points carefully even before exam because whenever you look at these type of points in the exam you get confused whether coral reefs does this act or not so at that point of time it's very important for us to focus on these issues as well then what are the measures that we need to take one of the basic thing is to tackle climate change that is with increasing temperature there is more worse things happening for the coral reefs and uh, here you will talk about all the points associated with the reduction of the climate change and you should know that whenever the carbon increases carbon dioxide level increases in the atmosphere the oceans actually act as the carbon sink forests are one and the second one is oceans so it's very important for you to look into this and the second important is with respect to reducing pollution so industries and others which are actually present in this region or which are present closer to the coral reefs they should actually look into the chemical waste that are they are releasing into the seas and today if we are talking about the great barrier reef issue most of the people are protesting against the companies which are actually involved in releasing chemicals into the marine water which is creating lot of problem for the coral reefs and then you have coastal regulation zones where we have to look into the ways of fishing and there should be some standards kept whenever we are talking about the fishing practices in this region right so these are some of the things which we need to focus with respect to coral reefs then let's move quickly 
please remember that whenever we are actually talking about any issue whether it is with respect to coral reefs or not there will be some topics which are associated with the basics of the subject and sometimes students feel that if we could revise this at that point of time itself it will be beneficial earlier we had an habit of telling to the students that please go back to con polity book and please read at that point of time students will feel that yes we will go back and revise and they will never revise and on the last minute at least one week before exam when they are looking at these books if the answers or related topics are present then and there itself we feel that you will be spending time in knowing about these topics as well and the second important thing there are lot of students who are actually watching these videos who have preparing by themselves so they basic concepts which respect to particular subjects are not so strong this is the reason why we asked you to mail personally because at that point of time we actually understand the students need when we look at the comments we feel that sir thank you thank you most of the people will be thank you but when we ask them to mail lot of mails that we received were with respect to specific queries regarding the subject we realized that these are the students who need genuine help they are not present in the metros where these are actually present or they didn't had the opportunity to go to the coaching classes at all so to help these kind of students this initiative is mainly focused so even when we are stressing on certain points which you are aware of think that it is just revision because our ambition as an institution is to reach to those people who are actually present in the remote corners of the country and who have dreams to crack this exam in their first attempt itself right so let's see the next important point that is with respect to international women's day where you all know that every year whenever these type of events happen during that week people will be talking lot of issues about the women and their workforce or how they are being treated gender issues all this becomes important in that week this is the reason why we feel that whenever we do weekly we can highlight that particular event as well so that when we are looking at a monthly wise we feel that all these things are common but when we are actually looking at weekly we can actually focus on these areas in detail so what is the use of this we all know the dates and all but please do remember whenever these type of events happen lot of people who are from this particular background they come out and they start talking about the issue in detail for example whenever you have the nobel peace prize being given to kailash satyarthi and malala yousaf zai lot of articles came about the child rights in the country and what are the problems that india is facing so when we observe the questions at least one or two questions came on the child rights and if we could include these topics it will be much better the same way whenever you see any particular issue in any event wise at that point of time please take this as an opportunity to know about that particular community or the problems that they are facing so that if you can write these points in your answers we can guarantee you that you get maximum marks so if we are looking at the international women's day one is with respect to the date if by chance if they ask you you should remember and the second one is the theme right the theme was planet 50 50 by 2030 step it up for gender equality so sometimes they have asked you with respect to what is the uh, like you know theme of planning commissions of a particular plan of a particular event sometimes it may come we should not feel that i saw that but i did not remember so just to avoid those type of answers and prelims we have given these mains as well so the next important thing that we need to focus is the day has now come to be known as united nations day for women's rights and international peace so this is important next we have to look at women's contribution as i told you whenever women's day happens you get some important information about them let's see what is their contribution actually present here that is first we need to look at gender dividend 
it is direct contribution of women to the economic growth of the country when we say direct contribution we are actually talking about labor participation rate of women right so next we need to look at the facts with respect to the labor participation rate from the report of fifth employment and unemployment survey and here we see that only 23.7% of eligible indian women we are not considering the total labor force we are talking about eligible indian women are part of the workforce whereas for men it is 75% gender equality when you are actually talking about you can give these points as well in urban areas this number drops further to only 60% for men the comparable number is 69% even for those women who are part of the workforce the unemployment rate is high 8.7% compared to 4% for men so these are some of the factual information which we need to see with respect to the female labor participation then they actually talked about what is actually happening with respect to the india's missing women workers whenever pictures of this sort comes even the heading of this can become a question that's the reason we have given you here so that you understand the importance of these type of documents or data which actually comes up whenever a particular issue is in news then let's move to the next important thing that is with respect to the global gender gap index and when we are talking about the gender gap index which is actually given by the world economic forum the report global gender gap as you are aware reports are also asked and we need to look at the major components the report actually looks at one is economic participation and opportunity whether they are participating and is there any opportunity available to them the second important thing is educational attainment gender education we need to look into third political empowerment what is the representation of women then health and survival so is this important for us to look whenever any report comes up at that point of time usually upsc asks you when we are talking about global gender gap report what are the factors considered in this because upsc has already asked you such questions this is the reason when we saw the report we thought that it is important for us to provide the details on which the report is actually based on and then they also talk about the reasons which are responsible for this one among rural women the farm sizes are declining this is forcing the women not working in the farmlands the second important thing rising mechanization replaces women labor but women in particular decreasing labor demands in agriculture and whenever it is going for seasonal it is becoming much more complex among urban urban women lack of right work environment we are looking at the sexual harassment and other cases this is one of the major reason why you will observe that most of the women are not allowed to work and the second one is with respect to lack of family friendly work institutions then long distance travels and improper connectivity is also one of the reason prioritization of child rearing over personal career in indian families is also one of the issues sociology guys you can add to these points as well then we have to look at what exactly we need to do or what is the recommendations of the report there they actually talk about improving access right so where the jobs are reducing we have to give alternative job opportunities for the women and then we also have to look at the sharing of burden that is social attitudes towards family work sharing have to be changed that is not only women has to look after even men has to look after this so let's look at the question is it is high time for india to move towards gender dividend along with general demographic dividend substantiate whenever the question talks about substantiate you have to give 
facts or examples to prove whatever you feel is correct. So we have already given you the points. You can add them to frame your answers. Let's move quickly to the next chapter or next paper where the focus is about paper 3 CAG audit is in news. So as whenever these institutions are also coming up in news. It is very important for us to look at the basics of it, especially when we talk with respect to polity, the basics is with respect to the articles associated with it. As I told you, I have given here all the points that is required for you to remember with respect to CAG. So please go through this or you can open your Lakshmi Khan book, polity book and read that carefully once. Right. So even in the next page, the focus is mainly about these articles. I don't want to explain you these. So let's move quickly to the latest developments that are actually happening about the audit in India. So when we are talking about the audit, CAG has taken audit of private telecom companies as ordered by the Supreme Court. So you may get a question that as per constitution, what are the things CAC can audit? So can it go for auditing of private? So that can happen when Supreme Court or any body authorizes it to do so. So and then we also have to look at some related points. As I told you always, Kelkar Committee on Public Private Partnership also recommended for the expanded role of CAG to audit PPP because private players are not comfortable to go for CAG, but we know that whenever Delhi elections happened and telecom electricity sectors, whenever there were some irregularities mentioned, many people in many committees have talked about CAG's role to be extended wherever the government funds are also going. There are people who are also talking about CAG should be involved in auditing of NGOs as well. So if all this needs to happen, then we need to actually increase the strength of the CAC and environment audits are also conducted by CACs nowadays. And then when we are looking at big data is playing a revolutionary role. Here we wanted to bring this particular point because technology is very important and within technology big data is very very important. Science and tech if you can look at what exactly is big data it is more than enough. Next important point that we need to focus is with respect to the maternity benefits amendment act and let's see what are the major points which are there in the bill. That is one important thing is the bill extends the period to 26 weeks that is the maternity leave is it important sometimes the factual information of this sort can be given wrongly by UPSC and they may ask you to say maybe they increase it to 24 weeks or 52 weeks when they use such terms we don't know the exact month and we may or exact number and we may do mistake in that particular one then we need to look at introduces maternity leave up to 12 weeks for a woman who adopts a child below the age of three months. So again, this particular fact is important. Then it also talks about establishment with 50 or more employees to provide for creche facilities. That is the role of companies. If you have more than 50 employees, then you should have the baby care facilities so that the working woman can take care of the child at the same time she can work as well. Just now in the social issues sector we saw that women should not compromise on her career. So what can be done so that she can work at the same time she can do some functions. So there these type of points are usually important. Then let us see the other two points that is an employer may permit a woman to work from home and this is not mandatory only if the nature of the work permits her to do so and the bill requires an establishment to inform a woman of all the benefits. The reason for this is there should be some communication in the writing that these are all provided to you. Most of the companies they have the rules and regulations if someone goes for auditing or checking then they say that see sir we have stated all this but 
when you ask the people or the work the women who are working there they will say that no we were not aware of it so even though the rules exist most of it when it is not known to the woman then the institutes or company try to misuse it so transparency has to be established in the corporate companies as well so one advantage of this is this actually helps to reduce the child mortality rate and the maternal mortality rate where both child and the mother will be given enough time to look after and the second important thing is with respect to indian labor conference which focuses on increasing the maternity leave of women as i told you the second important issue is with respect to the health of child and mother and the third important thing is with respect to child force participation rate most of the women lose their jobs during this period maybe they require 24 or 26 weeks you are giving only 12 weeks so they will either think of quitting the job during that period and when they have to come back there won't be enough opportunities one of the surveys also show that most of the women who quit their jobs is either during marriage or during the pregnancy where they feel that enough time has to be given for taking care of the children but again when they want to go back there won't be the same opportunity available for them so this is actually creating lot of problem so let's hope with this this gap will be usually filled now the next important point is with respect to what are some of the impacts of this the increase in costs could impact the competitiveness of the industries because if a particular employee is going out for 26 weeks in short term you cannot replace them so that is one issue and the other one is what about the unorganized sector who are not actually covered under this and at last you might be aware that recently the government has talked about giving 6000 rupees for the pregnant woman to take care of the children whenever these kind of things comes up you should actually remember about the infant mortality rate and maternal mortality rate so the next important one is with respect to india sri lanka relations where whenever we talk about india sri lanka relations it is with respect to the fishermen right indian fishermen are arrested and shot in sri lanka so let's see some of the basics with respect to this one do we have any agreement with sri lanka with respect to the fishermen yes we have 1974 and 1976 maritime border agreements one agreement was with respect to pak strait the other agreement was with respect to bay of beng gulf of mannar that is one agreement was to look at the median line between the exclusive economic zones of india and sri lanka it respect to pak strait the other one was in the gulf of mannar region what actually causes is that when you have india and sri lanka the median line is not straight but it is zigzag because of this zigzag pattern usually what happens indian fishermen cross or enter into sri lankan waters without knowing the international borders properly at that point of time we usually see that these type of issues comes up and the next important thing that we need to observe can you see here in the map it's very clear when it comes here it bends like this so for fishermen it is very difficult to know where exactly is indian border and the sri lankan border and in most of the cases we usually see that it is indian fishermen who actually cross than the sri lankan fishermen if you look at the number of arrests and all it is seen that sri lankan fishermen who enter into indian waters is very less when compared to the indian fishermen entering and one of the major reasons for this is simple that is indian fishermen use advanced trawlers for fishing so most of the fishes on our side gets cleared and we enter into the other side where 
more fishes are available you may ask me so then what are the sri lankan fishermen doing the sri lankan fishermen are have not it adopted the better fishing equipments and because of this where they use some basic tools the fishes are not exhausted there so this motivates most of the indian fishermen to move to the other side and get as many fishes as possible and you should be aware that these are coral reefs regions and wherever you have coral reefs enough fishes will be there and this usually motivates the people to cross and get the fishes so for this our navic system is actually helping a lot where recently the indian government launched its own gps system irnss and the focus was with respect to navic mainly because there a transponder will be set which actually diverts the fishermen to other areas where fishes are present more within indian waters and at the same time it will also tell to the fishermen if they are crossing into sri lankan waters a signal will be sent to them so that they can avoid crossing it if it is happening without their knowledge then the central government of india has told that both the sri lankan fishermen and the indian fishermen has to sit together and they have to come to a conclusion rather than the governments involving and the third important point is sri lankan people they always demand that indians should not use these trawlers because when they use it they have significant advantage and some reports also show us that sri lanka being an island country also imports fishes from us so this forces them to rethink about the policies that usually happen with respect to sri lanka then there is a question with respect to cag please look into it and try to answer them then let's move to the fourth paper where the focus is about the gst i won't be explaining much about the gst here the reason for this is we want to come up with a separate video on gst and we want to release this video in may because everyone is expecting that by july 1st the gst will be coming up and there are lot of things which people assume that it is going to be part of the gst so we want to wait because even by chance if you don't revise at the end about what actually happened in the gst today when i am teaching in this lecture about gst i may talk about some negatives about gst and in may they may actually change it when they change it the question will be with respect to the changes and not with respect to what you read or criticize today so even by chance if you miss that particular video then you should not answer the question wrongly it's fine to think that sir you did not explain gst but rather than explaining gst and you going into the examination hall and seeing that something has happened and you answer it wrongly so to avoid that we have done this you may ask us sir but why have you given it here some basic facts about gst we have given one is with respect to the amendment act and how exactly the gst is going to work so these two are very very important for us so just look at it once and what we need to observe is here where we have given you the link of the pib news article with respect to the gst please go through this carefully once because as it is government release they have given some points which we have mentioned here itself as i told you i won't be going in detail because i want to make a separate video on gst to explain you the basic concepts about how exactly gst works what are the exceptions in india on july 1st what is it that we are going to adopt right so that will be seeing at that point of time next let's look at the most important one it was with respect to the niif that is national investment and infrastructure fund the reason why it is important was it was talking with with 
to sovereign funds for more funds into national investment and infrastructure fund so that it can be used for construction of roads railways sea projects and many other projects government is actually thinking about so first thing is we need to understand what exactly niif is whenever any institution or organization comes please remember whether it is in economy international relations or polity please try to know about that organization for example if the question is with respect to brics they may ask about the working of the brics as well so please be prepared for those type of topics so what exactly is niif it's a fund is an ideal blend of private sector entrepreneurship with sovereign support that is state is actually helping the companies to go for this it is not ppp here money is actually given by the country it aims to bring in viable returns on infrastructure by limiting the risk one of the major issue with respect to the economic survey of last year was the chakravyu problem in indian economy when we were talking about the chakravyu problem one of the major thing was with respect to the construction and infrastructure industry being suffering because of lack of funds and even when they get funds because of lack of clearances and other legal issues procedural issues there is delay and due to this the corporates do not have enough money so it is also leading to the twin balance sheet problem which you have observed in this year's economic survey as well so to solve all this we need to have the funds from the central government flowing to these private companies to go for infrastructure projects so that they feel it's not risky to enter into the infrastructure company right so next let's actually look at some of the main components with respect to niif that is it was created as an investment vehicle for funding commercially viable greenfield brownfield and stalled projects i told you right when it comes to the stalled projects it was very important for us to take care of this to come out of the chakravyu project so niif was helpful so they may ask you consider the following statements with respect to niif and these points may come the second is with respect to it is a set up as fund of funds category 2 alternate investment fund with a proposed series of funds so what exactly is category 2 alternate investment fund so whenever we look at the different types of funds or banks that are actually present we categorize them on the basis of the amount that they can disperse or how much money they get or are they getting directly from investments of the people or they are actually getting from the government which is being transferred to the people so that is there are few organizations like niif where the funds may come from different sources they accumulate these funds and they give there are some there are some things which take funds from the people and they actually give it to the companies so anything of that sort are actually categorized they are actually technical in nature you need not worry about it i just gave you an overview of the categories which are actually present in these funds then the government will seek participation from the strategic investors such as sovereign funds other countries whenever they have money we can ask them to invest in us quasi sovereign funds and multilateral or bilateral investors adb ndb all this we can usually go and cash rich psus pension funds provident funds sm national small saving funds also be diverted toward this so that we have enough funds for the infrastructure projects next important thing is with respect to the western ghats conservation last year also there was a question about the committee that is kasuri rangan committee or the other committee which are associated with the western ghats they asked is it about the conservation of western ghats or is it with respect to ppp project all these type of things comes up sometimes whenever we look at certain committees it is very important for us to know at least this committee stands for what now when we are looking at western ghat conservation we know that from environment and ecology point of view it is very important for us to look so to look at the basics it is known as sahyadri 
Western Ghats is a 1600 km long from Tapti border of Gujarat Maharashtra till Kanyakumari you have six states falling in this right so let's not go in detail Tamil Nadu also comes that includes and forms it to be sixth state and then we need to look at what exactly is this biodiversity when we, when we look at the international segregation see in india when you look at the biomes there are different names given internationally the biomes are given different names india year book actually gives different names of all these with respect to india and western ghats is actually part of sri lanka and western ghats biodiversity hotspot this can be a question so please be prepared for that then when we are actually looking at world so among the 34 this is with respect to sri lanka western ghats in sri lanka and it is one of among the eight hottest biodiversity hot spots which are actually present and then we are also looking at south western ghats moist forests and western ghats rivers are categorized as critically endangered by wwf please remember here they are not only talking about the criticality of the forest they are also talking about the rivers as well many of us feel that is the critically endangered status given only to animals or is it given to certain areas as well so eco regions whenever the wwf is looking after they consider rivers as well because rivers also maintain the biodiversity of a particular region then the world conservation monitoring center considered it as one of the important areas of freshwater biodiversity these are the different things by different international organizations from environment and ecology point of view it is very important and when we look at the need for protection whenever biodiversity rich places are present it is important for us to look at this and the second important thing is that western guards they are very helpful in mediating monsoons and the next important thing is we have to actually look at the problems especially with respect to the documentation when you don't have proper documents it is very difficult for us to assess the situation of ecosystem in western guards then we have to look at the committees which are actually working with respect to western guards one is madhav gadgil committee the other one is kasuri rangan committee so these two committees were actually involved in working for the conservation of western guards but unfortunately even though we have agreed on this report it has not yet been notified so this is one of the major issues with respect to conservation of western guards then let's look at the argument which is actually present this may be important not only from the conservation of western guards point of view but it is also important from the ethics point of view we have given whether we have to focus on conservation or development some facts are given on both sides very simple just you can go through upsc especially in ethics they may ask you should we focus more on conservation or should we focus on development then the next important issue in news is cyber security as you are aware after november 8th when we are talking about digital india one of the major issues with respect to digital india is with respect to the cyber security is our digital economy secured enough we have seen legion which actually hacked into certain twitter accounts and all to show that india is not hack free and they also told that they have access to the banking sectors and all so when this is the case we have to look at some of the basics with respect to the cyber security that is in science and technology you will come across this whenever i tell basics wherever it is required i'll explain you else you can actually look at the factual information because we will be wasting a lot of time in explaining the basic parts itself rather than that if we are in a position to understand how a particular question comes and spend more time on it it will be beneficial and now when we are actually talking about the malware and other basic factors they may give what exactly is malware or they may give you match the following for a particular term and 
the meaning of that so it's very important for you to know the definitions of all this we have given only three the reason for that is newspaper specifically mentioned about only these three but our suggestion is cyber security basics go back and read almost all the topics that are important now coming to the challenges which are actually involved with respect to the cyber thing is that it is often faceless and borderless because of this as you are not in a position to know what exactly or who exactly is involved in this, it is very difficult for you to curb this. It does not have territorial jurisdiction outside India. Right? And the second important thing is our enforcement agencies are not trained enough. They don't know what is actually happening in this. So you need some trained personal entering or you should have a private thing which actually looks into this. In India, traditional laws became inadequate to solve the new issues in the digital era. That is, the laws has to be stricter to ensure or to conserve these crimes as well. And then when we look at the way forward, one important thing is with respect to training of police officers to combat cyber crime, which is a huge task, or we can actually go for public-private partnership similar to United States. We have given the example with respect to the United States. Similarly, we also have to focus on NASCOM Affiliated Data Security Council of India, which is actually considering ab ab about setting up cyber labs. And today we are also talking about Aadhaar, right, where we have actually given all the information and there is a fear about right to privacy. What if this is being misused? We have to ensure that the data security is actually made. So next we need to look at the jurisdictional limit. When we are looking at the jurisdictional limit, we need to tell to the government or we need to convince the government to make new laws which will actually help in bringing these cyber crimes into focus then in addition new legislation user training public awareness and technical security measures are also very very important next the question for this particular topic is also given you can look at it then let's move to the last topic that is first there is a question about the corporate governance you might have seen that people are mostly talking about like, you know, coop in the Tata groups and all. So how exactly or how ethical is this work is one that we need to focus. And the second one is with respect to the case study. So please try to go through this once. Fine. So after this, guys, it's very important for me to intimate it to you that please mail us at likes weekly at gmail.com. Please feel free to ask us what else you need. So as per now, our plans is to make a video on India yearbook on the lines of economic survey and the geography through maps will be released in May. The reason for that is whenever I have done a video on geography through maps, it is with respect to the current affairs till the last minute. That is the reason why I release it at the end. So May end will be the time when we will be releasing the geography through maps. And as I promised, we will be giving current affairs from September till now by April end. The things which are left, we will be covering and we will be giving you the materials as well. And we are extremely sorry again that we could not evaluate the papers and send it to you on time. You will be receiving them. The way of communication will also be informed to you. And at last, if required on the basis of the suggestion and the writing skills of the people, if you need further help from us, please feel free to contact us in any way whatever is possible from our end with the limited opportunities available we will try to help as much as possible thank you guys thanks for watching